Hey, what's up, guys? Today I'm going to be talking to you about why I'm choosing to build my own app myself rather than pay to have it made for me. Now, I told you guys the other day about how we are making a J and K app. It helps you live life system, stay on timers, organize your time, and just push play, which is going to be the name of the app. Just push play. And it's going to help you organize your life, organize your days, and just push play and then do what it says on there. And even if you spend too long on a task, it auto adjusts to keep you on time and make sure that you get everything done um, within your day. So it's a really cool idea. And I just have not been able to find an app that already exists that does this. So we're going to make our own. Now I had two choices. I could either pay to have it made for me, or I could build it myself. Now I am not a real programmer. I, uh, I have never really learned to the full extent programming languages. I've only worked with things called visual programming languages. So I'm pretty good at the logic um, of how to program, but I never went to school for it. I've only taken a couple little online courses, so I'm not the best at it. But um, if I were to have my app made, I would either go with Fiverr or Upwork. Now, these are two awesome websites for if you need something done, consult these websites first to see if someone can do it for you on there. There's good prices, there is uh, quality control, so if you don't like how it came out, you can get your money back and things like that. So let me quick show you guys those, because if you're not familiar, this is something that you should check out. So let's go to Fiverr first. Now, if I were going to have somebody make an Android app for me, I could go with one of these. And so if you are considering having someone make you an Android app, I would definitely look on here. You're going to get the best price right on here first. Now, if you've never been to Upwork, Upwork is a great website too. So if you go on here, you can find people who are experts, like this guy, expert uh, app builders. And so you can just check it out but the prices tend to be higher, like $110 per hour. So I would check Fiverr first. Now, if you are not a programmer, but you want to try to make your own app, you can always try out visual programming languages. Now, several years ago, I started learning to program. And one of the first things that I did was I started playing with MIT App Inventor. App Inventor is a really cool program that helps you to create apps and they've made it kind of open source so other companies and businesses can use their basic code and it's really cool. So let me show you a little bit about how this works. So in here on the side you have different things that you can drag in. You create your user interface here and then you go to the blocks editor and then you can play around and make just drag and drop different things in and make it work. So rather than typing the code, you're just dragging and dropping it. And it helps you to focus on learning the logic rather than trying to learn um, exactly how to spell everything right and do a lot of memorization. You can just kind of scan through the side and drag and drop things in. So that's the premise. Now, there are several other ones that are just based on MIT App Inventor that I've been looking at as well. One that I've been playing with a lot is called Appy Builder. So Appy Builder is the exact same thing as MIT App Inventor, but they just polished it up a little bit. You can see that it looks and feels incredibly similar. It helps you to just instantly be able to play with it on your phone. So you just connect your phone and you can just look right on there and play with the app, see how it behaves. Um, so it's almost the exact same thing. It's just, it just has a few more bits of functionality built in and I haven't really had a problem with it at all. I haven't really had many problems with App Inventor either. So I'm trying them all out and I'm not really sure where I'm going to land yet. Another that's incredibly similar is Codular. So this is free, this is free, and this is free. Um, Thunkable is another one, uh, very similar. Uh, it's free, but all of your apps are public. People can find them and just copy them and use them unless you pay for 200, pay for privacy, which is $200 per year. So people can't 
uh, steal your apps. The cool thing about Thunkable is that it can also publish to iOS. Let's go back to Codular or Codular. I don't really know how to pronounce it. I guess Codular. Now, Codular is really nice. I might even like it more. So right now, I think I might be leaning in this uh, direction. So Codular is even a little bit more polished. It's really nice. But it is, again, the same basic thing. Here's the blocks editor. Here's the designer where you can drag your things in. So I'm having fun playing with all these different apps. So let's take a look at Thunkable. This is an incredibly popular one. Um, it's, again, very polished, very nice. But you do need to pay 200 bucks if you don't want your app stolen. So um, that's that's a little steep for something that if you're still just trying to think it through. But, of course, you can just play with the free version for as long as you want, and probably no one's going to steal your code. But you never know. Um, but it's very cheap if you're actually building apps and making money. So let's take a look at what it looks like on the inside. Once you're logged in, you, again, can just drag things in. You can see your invisible components here. This is all the stuff that you can drag in. And now let's take a look at the blocks editor. So I didn't make anything yet, but again, it's exactly the same. It's all based on, I believe, originally Blockly, which is a Google thing. But it's, uh, it's all very similar. You can see they're all built on the same framework. The one other one that is not based on MIT App Inventor, so I should probably tab this one out, is Construct. Construct is really cool. Of course, you, this is paid, but it's really made for building games, which I'm not planning on building a game right now. But I bet I could build in this. Um, and the cool thing is that this works. It's just all HTML, so it can work directly online and then also uh, very easily port to Android and iOS as well. But it's for games. It's not made for apps. Um, of course, I'm just really building a prototype anyway. When I am done building my original app, it once it works and all that kind of stuff, I will probably pay to have someone copy it and make it into a really uh, a native Android and iOS app and also a web app. Um, so I didn't feel like Construct was the way to go on this one, um, but it is fun. I have made a couple little games on this. I have, I, I do like it. So if you are planning on making your own game, try this out. It's really cool. And again, it's a visual programming language. Now let me go back and show you guys what visual programming languages are. So I showed you basically this. This is Scratch. Scratch is another very popular one. Uh, there a lot are for teaching kids how to code. You can see here, this is Wikipedia. Just uh, type in visual programming language and you'll be able to find all of this. Um, and there's tons. A lot of them are very cool. Um, a lot for making video games, uh, systems sim simulation, automation. Automation, that's a Mac thing. Um, a lot of them are really fun, really cool. Uh, great way to get into coding if you don't want to feel overwhelmed in the beginning. If you just want to go step by step, drag and drop, literally, um, this is a cool way to do it. So let's look at the other ones as well. Android Studio, uh, the main one here is Thunkable. That's a very popular one. Appy Builder, talked about that. Codular, talked about that. Bubble, that's one that I would like to check out and get into more. Um, I played with Pocket Code. That's awesome. That's right on Android. Haven't tried that, haven't tried that, but just going to scroll through for a second so you can take a look. So again, like I said before, uh, it's fun to make your own apps right in one of these visual programming languages, uh, editors, and see if it works. See if you can get a prototype working. Jumping right in, especially if you are not going to school or taking deep online courses and if you don't have tons of patience, um, starting with a visual programming language is probably a better experience for you than just jumping straight into something like Java or uh, JavaScript or um, C++. Something like that might be uh, a little bit overwhelming. 
if you don't have any coding experience. But I've had a lot of fun with it so far, and I will definitely keep you updated on how this all comes out, and I will talk to you guys soon. All right, have a great day. See ya.